Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the ASUS Chromebook Flip, which is a small, inexpensive Chromebook with a 10-inch display, a rock chip processor, and a starting price of about $229. It runs Google's Chrome operating system, which is based around the Chrome web browser. And in addition to acting like a normal laptop, it has a touchscreen display, so you can interact using your fingers. It has a 360-degree hinge, which allows you to fold it, fold the screen all the way backwards, and hold the device like a tablet with automatic screen rotation and so on, or you can prop up the screen and sort of use it in tent mode. It's also one of the first devices that supports Android applications for Chrome OS. Starting with Chrome 53 dev channel, which was released in mid-June 2016, you can run Android applications by downloading them from the Google Play Store, which is pretty much the same place that you would get Android apps, games, movies, and other media and content and so forth for an Android phone or tablet. There's a couple of kinks uh, that still need to be worked out and a couple of weird quirks that you have to get used to, um, but for the most part, applications that you download and install from the Play Store seem to work pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a few of those things. When you go to your All Apps menu, you'll actually see a mix of applications that were uh, Chrome web apps and Android applications once they're installed. So let's go ahead and open, for instance, Google Play Movies. And go to my library and say we want to watch Gravity. So it's Where playing. Are you? Give me a visual. Just tell me what you see. But you will notice that it does not play in the background. So I can play it again here. But you can't have two applications running at the same time in this mode. So you can't say watch a video and surf the web at the same time. Um, but overall, it works pretty well if all you want to do is watch a video. So that's Google Play. Same thing works with uh, Netflix and other video applications that I've tried. Something that's kind of handy to be able to do is install third-party photo editing software. So here's Snapseed. And I'm just going to go ahead and open a screenshot that I made earlier and say I want to crop it. I can do that with my fingers. Or I can also use the touchpad or keyboard and mouse to interact with the controls as well. Let's add some effect here. Let's do a little lens blur. So that's Snapseed. And so you wanted to do some Office. That's actually the web version of Office. Like I said, it sort of mixes the applications up. But I know I installed, there we go, here's the mobile version of Excel. So we can uh, create spreadsheets and edit documents and so forth. So uh, again, one application at a time. Uh, you can actually open multiple ones, but I found if you have too many running at the same time, it can cause a little bit of instability. Um, but if you're playing videos or something, you'll notice that they do sort of pause in the background. Um, I installed the Kodi Media Center and it does run. I haven't extensively played with it. Uh, and I don't have a lot of media on here. There's only 16 gigabytes of storage on this device, but uh, it does install, so that's something. And let's take a look at a game. And actually, before I launch this game, I'm going to go ahead and switch to holding this like a tablet, because I found that sometimes screen rotation and sort of switching away the, uh, the keyboard uh, can cause problems. So let's go ahead and open up Riptide here. And if you don't want to see those buttons down here at the bottom, you can just sort of swipe to make them go away. Now in this game, you're going to want to set it up not to use motion controls because they just don't work. But if you use touch controls, it works fine.
So that's some gaming. Let's say we want to close an application. You can just sort of long press it or click on it from the bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a little screen rotation here. I'll try and get this far enough away from the camera that you can actually see what's going on. And uh, let's try some reading applications. So I'm going to go ahead and open Marvel Unlimited. And open up an X-Men comic. And again, I can make the screen or uh, make it sort of go full screen by just sort of swiping to make the uh, tray go away there. Now I've had better luck with this in the past, but I just don't want to waste your time. So let's try something different and open up play books. And so here we go. We can read comic books. I used to be able to read regular books as well. And I've tried a couple of different applications for this, and they all seem to work pretty well. And again, I can close it by long pressing and hitting close, or by hitting the little X button there on the top. Google Maps works. And it's going to detect location. Using Wi-Fi. So here we've got a little map of Philadelphia, but it doesn't have GPS, so it's not going to work with uh, GPS or anything like that. So that's a quick look at some of the things that you can do. Now let's, uh, let's try to crash it. So I'm going to go ahead and open, um, Oh, actually, let me show you one more kind of fun thing here. I'll just close this before I do that. Another type of application that you can install from the Google Play Store would be web browsers. So while this is a Chromebook and it's running Google's Chrome operating system and Chrome web browser, I also went ahead and installed Firefox, and it works just fine. Now, the thing to keep in mind is if you're going to install Firefox or Opera or another web browser, you're going to wind up having the mobile version of the web browser. So you might get a, a slightly different user experience than what, you, than what you would expect from a desktop browser, but they do work. And so here we've got Chrome in one window and Firefox in another. Fire, uh, Chrome, Firefox. Now I did try installing the Google Chrome app for Android just for kicks and it installs, but it doesn't quite load properly. So nothing is opening here. All right. I promised I would show you something that's going to crash the system. So let's go ahead and go back here to that Marvel Unlimited app again. See if we can get it to open a book this time. Yeah, shouldn't take Marvel. I can probably do it with something else. Let's try Amazon Kindle. Now, in case you couldn't tell, e-reading is one of the things that I was sort of most excited about being able to do here, is that you can now use this device not only to read books on the web, but to, uh, to install e-book readers and comic book readers and so forth. But what you might think you would want to do is open up an application like this and then say, well, that's not really how I want to read a book. I want to tilt it over sideways. But when you do that, this tends to happen. It, uh, it doesn't take up the whole screen. It gets hard to close and it just sort of takes up space. And then when you try to come back, okay, in this case, it actually came back just fine, but I've, uh, yep, there we go. I can't close it. And I'm gonna try and long press and close. 
And again, it's not going to close. So I can do other things in the background. I can go ahead and open websites again. But I can't make this app close without rebooting the device. So the whole system isn't necessarily frozen, but it seems like screen rotation kind of breaks the, uh, the experience of running Android applications. Um, I think I might be able to load another Android application if I really wanted to. Or maybe not. So yeah, no, I think that's what happens is it sort of hangs that system. So rebooting the device will clear that, but trying to rotate the screen when you're running an Android application is just sort of a recipe for, uh, for problems. So that's how you crash it. But for the most part, everything else works fine. Like I showed you, you can play games, you can read uh, uh, eBooks, you can surf the web in alternate web browsers, you can edit photos, and, uh, and you can watch videos. Oh, it minimized. but it's still not letting me launch anything else. So again, easy way to fix that. Just turn off your device, turn it back on again. Everything should be back to normal. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at Android apps for Chrome OS on the Asus Chromebook Flip. Uh, should be coming soon as well to, uh, to Acer's Chromebook R11, Google Chromebook Pixel from 2015, and then additional Chromebooks in the future, and uh, Google has sort of promised that we might see more new types of Chromebooks uh, and Chrome OS devices now that Android applications run. So perhaps we'll see more 360 degree devices like this, or more detachables, uh, or some detachables. I don't think we've actually seen a detachable yet. Um, so some of those sort of Microsoft Surface style devices maybe as well. Uh, only time will tell, but it does open up that possibility of interacting with all sorts of different types of applications. It might also be nice to see some um, um, Chrome OS devices that might have additional storage. A lot of them only have 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes of built-in storage, and while you can uh, use a micro SD card or something else in order to uh, extend the storage, you can't currently install any Chrome apps or any Android applications on external storage. You also can't sideload applications. Uh, that's something else that I've noticed is a problem. I'm going to go ahead and log back in here because there's one more thing I wanted to show you actually. Uh, so you can't sideload applications. If you download APK files, they're not going to be installed, but most of the applications that, uh, that most people are probably looking for are going to be available from the uh, Chrome or from the uh, Google Play Store anyway. So the last thing I was going to show you here is when you have support for Android applications, you'll see a little option here to enable or disable, and then you can also click for app settings. And this is kind of a neat little screen here because if you're familiar with Android, it looks almost exactly like the Android settings menu on an Android phone or a tablet. Uh, just a few omissions here. You don't have all of the features that you would have elsewhere, but you do have storage in USB, so you can see how much storage space you've got left and how much is being used up by apps, images, videos, audio, and other. Um, although it takes a moment to calculate. There we go. Sound and notification settings. You can see a list of applications, and you can go in here to force stop or uninstall. Location settings security, accounts, language input, and uh, about tablet. And you can see it's running essentially Android 6.0.1. And interestingly, even though it's June 17th, it says that it's running Android security patch level July 5th, 2016, because this is kind of bleeding edge stuff here. So that is a look again at, uh, at Android applications on the Asus Chromebook Flip this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and you can find more details at lilliputing.com.